Hey guys, Thunder E here, and we're back with another episode of Should I Buy? And today's episode is something you guys voted for. It's all about the Pixel 3 XL. Yes, this is the latest smartphone from Google. Not the Pixel 3, we're talking about the XL, the much larger device here, which also has that beautiful massive notch. Now, we're gonna talk about things about the device, what we like, what we don't like, but most importantly, whether this is a device you should buy or you shouldn't buy, and also the reasons for that. Now, this is a new series we've started on the channel if you haven't seen this already, and let's go ahead and kick this off. So the Pixel 3 XL is the third generation Pixel device. Now, the XL, of course, is the largest device with a larger screen and also has a bigger battery. When you first look at the design, I have to say that I was a little bit disappointed because design is pretty much a refresh from last year. A little bit more polished, yes, the back feels much smoother and better, but overall still looks the same. And to me, this is where Google just didn't do a lot of work and they refined it a little bit and they actually made some changes to the front that I just didn't like. Now, it's got a massive notch in the front, which Google says because of the wide angle lens in there, um, they had to have that massive notch. And yes, my buddy um, Zach from Jerry Riggs Everything has turned down the device and says, yes, you might need that massive notch. I think it was just best, it would have been best for them to go with just a single notch in that camera. That being said, one of the best things in the Pixel uh, 3 XL is the camera. Both the front and the rear cameras do a fantastic job in photos. Whether you're taking uh, wide angle selfies uh, or you're taking uh, wide angle portrait selfies with a front facing camera, the images look absolutely stunning. You get a really vibrant look, you get some really sharp looks with it. And I think it's probably the best selfie camera to use out there. So I was hoping for them to actually go with a single wide angle lens and give me one of those dimple style notches. I would prefer that than the massive unibrow we have with this device. Now the display has been improved from last year and I'm happy to see that here with this OLED display much more vibrant, it's better. Uh, it's not gonna win any awards, but again, it's far from the, the debacle they had last year. So that's a good improvement there with this device. Now, as we know, the rear camera is also something Google has done a fantastic job with. They go with a single camera. Uh, a lot of companies out there are using dual cameras, whether it's Samsung, Sony, Huawei has three, LG has three. Google says no. We're gonna go with one lens. And uh, they've done a really tremendous job with that single lens. Now, when you're taking portrait photos with this thing, it looks really good. Now, it's not the classic true portrait uh, images that you have the both the foreground and the background being blurred out. The background is mostly the focus here, and it's actually fine. So with that camera sensor, they've done a lot of really good things. Now, like I mentioned, the portrait mode matches what you have on the front of the device. It is absolutely gorgeous. Yes, it doesn't do the foreground as much, but you can still see that bokeh effect that a lot of people are looking for with this. Images look really, really good on this camera. I have to say, um, Google has done a really good job in showing that the image quality, especially with the AI processing, HDR effects, and all the things they put together, really come out well. Now, the, uh, the beta night mode also is fantastic. Images are much brighter, sometimes a little too bright, but then it's in, it's in beta, so I'm not faulting them for that. But in images, just to say, Google does a fantastic job. When it comes to video, on the other hand, that's where I have a problem. Uh, the uh, video quality on the front facing camera is really not that good. Uh, and the video quality on the rear camera is solid. The audio quality is downright terrible. It looks like Google to me at least forgot this aspect of the device. Now, you know, it kind of sets the camera in a situation where you go, it's really, really good on one thing. On other things you use a camera for, it's not the best. So taking photos, it is fantastic. Now you've got a 34, uh, 30 milliamp battery on the Pixel 3 XL. And I have to say it is woefully lacking for a device this size. Uh, battery life I have experienced has not been great. And it's something I go, if you're gonna have a device that's 6.3 inches, has a 2K display on here, you really want to have a battery to, la to basically work with it. Plus you're running the closest thing to a stock Android experience with Android Pie. The battery life experience here has not met up to this large device. And I think it really takes away from it because one of the biggest features on this device is the fact that you know its size 
and what you can actually do with that size as well. And since the battery doesn't actually complement it as well, I think it's a very big miss here. Now, another thing to point out with this device, as I mentioned, it is running a stock Android experience. And what that means, you're getting at least, I would say, the closest thing with the Google launcher. And Google's added a few things this year with their gesture controls. And I have to say, though, this is was Google's attempt to move into the realm which Apple had kind of kicked off with, you know, gesture controls on iOS. We do have seen other Android manufacturers implement this as well. And Google being the ones who control the Android, at least operating system, I think have done a poor job here as well. I think this is something where they over-engineered something that could have been simple and easy. I'm sorry, it just doesn't flow as well. It works, but it doesn't flow. It's very glitchy when you're swiping up from your um, the home screen to the app tray and you have to go into this mini multitask area. It really slows down the experience and makes it a little bit hitchy for individuals to actually use. I'm not saying that you can't use it, I'm just saying that to me, it's a flawed experience. And it takes away from that simplistic idea of what the Pixel is. There are a lot of people who like that very clean interface. And yes, it's fast, yes, it's smooth, but it takes away from that interface here. Now, I think there are some things that the Google Pixel does really well, like the camera, um, and also just having a uh, closer stock Android experience. But a lot of things that uh, the Pixel 3 XL, I apologize, doesn't do as well. And you guys probably have guessed by now that I'm putting this as a you shouldn't buy or the should not buy category for this device because for what you're paying for at $800 for a 64 gigabyte version, this thing isn't worth the price. Yes, it's a stellar camera. And if you're buying it strictly for that camera as the big improvement, then sure, go ahead. I think the Pixel 2 camera is also really good. Some of those camera updates with the night modes can also be seen on that, maybe not as effective, but it's still a very good camera. And if you're looking at it for specifically that, be my guess. But if you want all the features in there, um, even though yes, it does have wireless charging, some of you mentioned that, it is IP68 rated, even though I am not too comfortable with it. I haven't actually destroyed the device yet, but I've had some very glitchy behavior in water with the device. I think it just doesn't land well for something that will be competing with the likes of a Galaxy Note uh, or the iPhone uh, XS. Yes, the camera can compete on many levels, but the device as a whole doesn't. I would actually suggest you pick up a Pixel 3, the regular size device, not the XL, or even take this opportunity to look at the Pixel 2 XL from last year. I think this is just something where Google didn't take that next step to pushing this device into that all around premium package that they want to with something like the Pixel 3 XL. So there you have it guys, for me, it's not a buy. Now, if you disagree with me, let me know, put your thoughts down, tell me Thunder E, you are absolutely wrong and the Pixel 3 XL is marvelous for all these many reasons. But if you do agree with me, also state, state your reasons as well. Otherwise guys, thank you very much for watching. If it's your first time watching this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel hit the notification icon to get notified with our latest videos. This is Thunder E saying thank you very much and always enjoy the entertainment.